what I'm going to do is bring this conversation in studio and seated alongside me is Ndate Wali Serote, a veteran of the African National Congress. Good morning to you, Ndate. Thank you very much. Morning, morning, for morning, the time. morning. Good morning. You have heard the commentary coming from that airport. The last gentleman uh, to speak there saying, this is Mandela's legacy. Is this a vindication of what Madiba dreamt of back in 1995 when he lifted the Webb Ellis Trophy? You know, um, first I must say to you, I'm, I'm absolutely surprised that I'm sitting here coming to talk about sports, especially rugby. Yeah. But it's a patriotic moment which brings me to sit here. Yeah. You know? And of course, associated to Mandela, but for me personally also associated to Steve Biko, because when I met him in, in, in 69, he told me that he was a scrum player. They're telling a boy from Alexandra, scrum player, and saying, what is that? <laughs> it's rugby. Why are you playing rugby when you're a black person? Yeah. And he told me what, what it means for him. But now today we're witnessing a very important moment, yeah. as you say, the Mandela moment, mm. the moment when South Africans have become totally, absolutely patriotic, yeah. and they own the country, they own what the country is, with all its difficulties. But, but how do South Africans hang on to this moment? Because it's not arriving for the first time. In 2019, the very same team, did exactly that, and Sia Kolesi captaining this team for the first time as a black person going into Japan. And I'm saying this because it, it would seem that South Africans have decided of their own accord that they are going to take refuge in the excellence that the Springboks represent. Why are South Africans so enthused about this moment and how can we hold on to it despite the problems we have? You know, the only reason I, 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 I would I agree to come and be interviewed on this matter yeah. is, another, is another very important thing that happened, a milestone of my life. Hmm. When um, I went to give a report to the, president, the, the, the then president of the African National Congress, uh, Oliver Tambo, mm. about culture. And he said to me, we must never ever forget, and I'm saying this now to cultural workers of our country, to emulate sports people. Mm. We must never ever forget that culture, arts and culture, has the potential and power to unite our people. Here's what we're seeing today in sports. And uh, as I was telling you, it reminded me of Steve. It reminds me that there are things that we have to, to understand about our country. What is it about this country which, which we have to understand and, 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 and engage to ensure that there is peace in this country? Yeah. Here's sports telling us. Across board, people participating in rugby. It's a non-racial sport now. And I, I wanted to really pay a tribute to the, to the leaders. You know, uh, I, I told you I'm not a sports person. Right. But as of today, I'll, I'll learn to be a sports person. I, I wrote down the names of the leaders of the rugby team. Erasmus, uh, the, the coach, right. uh, Rasi Erasmus, congratulations. Congratulations, Sias Kolisi. Con congratulations to Jack uh, Ninabar. Uh, you can see I'm learning now. Yes. I'm not only learning uh, the names. I'm learning about rugby being a national sport, a sport whose politics will make sure that when you handle it correctly, because it has been transformed. Yeah. Very important. It has been transformed. It's a South African sport now because all South Africans are in it. And that's why you're seeing every South African dancing today. C can I point out something that I, I'm watching and I think if I'm interpreting it correctly, you will give me why that is. South Africans, as you point out, united in this sport that has become non-racial. 
and its roots, we have been able to trace it back to that Madiba moment yes. when Francois Pinal was the captain of the Springboks. But the difference this time around is that you have the nation of South Africa decidedly choosing this team as the unifiers. And I would strongly argue that it's not the political figures anymore. Why have our politicians become such a disappointment or perhaps even a divisive element for our country as opposed to what Madiba was at the time and then, of course, trying to use this very sport that is bringing us together once again today? I think this moment, what this moment is saying to us, uh, the 60 million South Africans must take responsibility, must take ownership, as they do now, mm. uh, of the country. They must take ownership on making decisions about who in the politics will represent them. This is the moment now which, which is happening, which politicians must wake up to, as you say. This must, they must smell, smell the coffee and say, our people are leading us now. Yeah into which we should go. They, they saw Madiba, what Madiba did. Mm. The thing has now escalated to being rugby, which is now a national sport for every South African. This is the, this is the most important thing. Yeah. We're living in a moment where being South African is a problem because of the politics of the country. And yeah. I'm saying that consciously, deliberately. But our people are saying we can come out of that moment we can become patriotic, we can own the problems of this country, we can own the future of, the, of this country. This is how I, I, I want to interpret what I'm seeing now. So what must the, the politicians do? This is a question that we must pose now. And that's why I was calling Steve, that's why I'm calling uh, uh, O.R. Tambo, that's why we are, we are calling uh, uh, Madiba. Why? They led in a certain manner in the country, participating in a certain manner to make South Africa a humane country, a livable country, and to eventually own the constitution that we own today. Yeah. The people are claiming the constitution yeah. when they stand like that now. The, the first line of the constitution, South Africa belongs to all who live in it, in our diversity. This is what they are saying. Dr. Salort, I want to conclude the conversation with um, an image of your party's secretary general now, Figile Mbalila. My understanding is that he went to France, and I'm hoping that that picture is going to come up pretty soon. And he is the embodiment right now of the African National Congress, because that office of the secretary general, we have been told that it is an institution if you like. And there have been questions about how he dressed himself up as he appeared somewhere in France. Even a fellow party member posted that very same picture, Tony Yengen, asking the question, what's going on here? Asking him, Mr. And let me explain why that question at least for my interpretation. The question is around, why would you be donned in such an expensive piece of garment when we all know the realities of our country? Not too long ago, the ANC could not pay its workers. What messaging is Figil Mbalula as the embodiment of the African National Congress? What is it driving home for a party which calls itself the leader of society? Sitting here today, being a veteran member of that party, can you genuinely argue that the ANC still represents what it says is do it does, and that is to be a leader of society? No. I'm the first one to say the ANC has completely deviated. Uh, the
the ANC has completely betrayed our people. I'm the first one to say that. And as a veteran of the, of, of, of the ANC, this is what we are concerned about. We are saying, given this, what must we do? And we have arrived at a point where we are saying, let us define the problem. What is the problem yeah. that has brought the African National Congress to where it is now? And once we understand what is that problem, then we must say, what must we do? And that's where we, the veterans are now. Mm. And we've defined the problem correctly. We said the, 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 the serious problem of which happened to the ANC, it has within it people who are not ANC mm. at all. And it is a mistake that we did, which we must first accept. Mm. It's people who don't know anything about the ANC, Whose presence in the ANC is, they, answer, they want to answer the question, what is, I, what is it that I must do to become as rich as possible? Yeah. That is the thing that has happened. This is the load, the negative load that the ANC is, 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 is carrying. The second thing is this. There are those who came in coming from a conscious, deliberate act of destroying the ANC. In many ways than one, if you look at what is happening with ESCOM, what is happening with uh, Transnet, what is happening with uh, all the, uh, the, uh, the South African revenue service, what happened to it. Mm. Deliberate, conscious destruction of the means of economy to run the country on behalf of the poor. That's what has happened with the ANC. That is right. Hence the position that we take as the, uh, the, as the veterans to say, we have to find a way, what is it that we should do to renew the ANC? Let me thank you very much for your time, for your honesty. Thank you. Wallace Rotten, the veteran of the African National Congress.